Good morning, folks. Welcome back to Mark Kelly Farm. We've got some stuff we want to do today. We're hoping uh, the sun comes out. But uh, we've got our coffee made. We're making some breakfast. Stick around and come along with us today. Currently minus 15 right now. It was minus 18 a little bit ago. It looks like the sun is going to come out today, which will warm things up a little bit uh, in the greenhouse. It won't warm up too much outside. You can see we've had to push some snow yesterday. Made breakfast burrito for breakfast. We've got uh, bacon, egg, and cheese, and hash browns, some sour cream, a little bit of our habanero salsa. So we'll see you after breakfast. Well, that was a fantastic breakfast. Good stick to your ribs, what we need today. So, we recently found an outlet, well, a couple outlets for raw milk. And raw milk was one of my favorite things growing up on a dairy. But if you can believe it, California actually outlawed it. Just like some of the other silly stuff that they do. It's no longer legal to sell raw milk in California. But luckily, we have moved to the free state of Nebraska now, and we can buy raw milk here in Nebraska, and we found a spot. Now, we've been getting our milk in these one-gallon glass containers, and we had to supply them. Uh, the other place that we got milk, we had to put a deposit, and we used their containers. But we found a place a little more local here that we're going to try out. Now, these containers are very kind of clunky not easy to carry around, really heavy when they're full, and they're very hard to pour out of. It's hard not to make a mess. So I asked the lady if we can go to half-gallon jars. We've been getting two of these at a time. So I asked her if it's okay to bring four half-gallon jars. She said that would be fine. Now, I don't want to have to carry four jars in my arms, and I don't want her to have to do it either. So I'm going to make a carrier to carry these jars with a handle that we can hold on to, carry all four jars at once. We've got some extra wood we had left over from a project we did in the bedroom. So I think I have enough wood to get that done. So let's get outside and see if it's warm enough in that greenhouse. Well, it's 60 degrees out here in the greenhouse, so we'll be good to go. So let's go get some tools and our wood. We'll get this project going. You can see all the snow we had to push yesterday. Make it so we could park the vehicles out here. It was getting so deep that uh, the vehicles would just stop, even four-wheel drive, and just spin tires. You can see the big drifts we have here in the backyard. This one here is about three feet deep. Ruby's already been playing in it. It's going to take a while to melt off, for sure. All right, we got all our power tools we need. We got our wood. We got square, about everything we need out here cut our wood that we need so we've determined that our sides on our carrier need to be seven inches so I marked over seven inches we're going to cut this with our uh, little circular saw normally I would do all this on a table saw but I don't want to drag my table saw clear out here in the greenhouse in the snow that wouldn't be very fun and it doesn't have to be perfect we're not building a clock or anything and I need two of these pieces so I've got the first one measured out and then we'll measure over and cut the second one as well. And this is enough to do all four sides of our carrier. Got all of our sideboards cut to width. We're going to wait to cut them to length until we figure out uh, how big our square is going to be underneath. So we're going to do some mathematical stuff and figure out how wide our bottom needs to be. All right, our, we figured our square on the bottom needs to be a minimum of 10 inches. So we went 10 inches and 1 eighth of an inch square. And that'll give us just a little bit of wiggle room. So let's get this square cut out. 
So now that we've got our bottom square cut, we put a piece on each end. And now we know the outside measurement of one of our side pieces, which comes out to 11 and 9 16 So we'll cut out an 11 9 16 board out of this one and out of this one. And then out of the leftover ones, we'll cut the ones that go on this side, which will be 10 and an eighth, just like the bottom. Ooh, I had to take the jacket off. It's uh, too warm in here for a jacket. Now let's cover a little bit on our uh, material we're using here. It's called three-quarter plywood, but three-quarter plywood is no longer three-quarters. It's under three-quarters, so that's why the math isn't just simple. If the math was simple, if we had a 10-inch square bottom, we would just have to cut an 11 and a half inch side because three quarters and three quarters is obviously one and a half. But because they don't make this stuff exactly three quarters of an inch anymore, they try to save a little bit just like they do on everything else, charge you the same price. We have to allow for that little bit less of a thickness there. So uh, also when you're cutting this with a circular saw, unlike a table saw that cuts downward, and usually you put your good side up. With a circular saw, it cuts upward, so you want to put your good side down. That way, if there's any splinter out on the top, it's actually on the inside or the not the good side of the wood. Now, the other two pieces, we just cut 10 and 1 8 inches just like the bottom. Use our square to square that up. <coughs> Sawdust in here. Now this is our 10 and 1 8, so we want to leave this line as we're cutting. We want to cut on this side of the line so it leaves our correct measurement. Okay, we've got our exterior of the box made. Now we need to make our dividers on the inside. Uh, one of our pieces of wood up here is, I believe, exactly the right measurement to go inside. So we just have to figure out what height. So what we'll do is we'll just set this inside of another board here. And then we'll just score a line on the top to get our height. Well, the board we thought we were going to use was just a little bit short. So we'll use this one here. So all we got to do, we got one board on the inside. And this is the board that sits on the outside. We're going to just run our line here and that'll tell us where to cut our board and then we'll get the other measurement and we'll cut it this way as well. Now that we've got one of our middle cross pieces, our separator pieces, cut, we need to cut our other one which is also going to be 10 and 1 8 of an inch wide but we need to make it taller because I want it to go above the bottles in the carrier just far enough to get a handle on that piece and then we're going to taper it up from the side so it's not absolutely square so let me measure that out on a board and i'll show you what that looks like okay there's our other piece all drawn out we did our 10 and an eighth wide we went up six and three sixteenths which is the height of our other inside divider and then we tapered in the top we went in I think two inches on either side and then we wanted our handle wider than our hand so we did the outside of where our handle is going to be and then we did half of our drill bit in from there so our drill bit will actually come out to here we're going to drill two holes and then we're going to connect the outside of those holes with our jigsaw Now anytime you're using a spade bit, you want to drill through to where you get a hole on the other side. 
and then drill back through this way. That way you get a clean outside diameter of your hole. Now we've drawn our connector lines where we're going to cut this out with our jigsaw to make this a big oblong hole. Alright, we got our carry handle. Now we can cut all the rest of these lines with our circular saw. Okay, we've got our other divider made with our handle in the top. So I'm going to go get our router and I'm going to take our router and round over both sides of this hole here so it's uh, not sharp corners. That rounds it over real nice. It's going to make it real comfortable for carrying. So now what we need to do is we need to get our two divider pieces and right in the middle, we need to cut a slot halfway up in both. Uh, the other one will actually have one halfway down. This one will have one halfway up. So that way when they're inside, they'll mesh together. Well, these boards are about uh, 23, 30 seconds wide. So we've marked that off of the center of our boards. And then we've got the slot marked. So we're going to cut the bottom part out of this one and the top part out of this one and that should allow them to slide right together. So we'll get these cut out. Got both of our slots cut and there's what she looks put together right there. So now what we're going to do is while this is still apart, I'll probably round over these edges with the router. I'll round over these edges just down to the corner here. And then the outer edges of all the outer boards. And then I think I'll just kind of sand uh, the inner edges probably. We want the corners to fit together real well. Got all of our pieces manufactured. We got all the corners rounded over that we need rounded over. We did the inside of our short outside boards. And we did the outside of our long outside boards. Because we want our corners still to come together good. Once everything's together, we can go around that outside corner and clean it up. So we're going to go inside the house down in the basement because our glue would freeze out in the shop. And uh, it's kind of hot out here in the greenhouse. So we're going to take a drill so we can drill some holes for our screws. We'll get the glue out. We'll start putting this thing together. Down in our little workbench area here, uh, in our basement, we've got all our pieces. We've got some glue here that we had in the house, so it's not frozen. We've got a drill bit, just a little bit bigger than the screw that we're using. And then we have our driver there for our screws. So we're going to start gluing this thing up and putting it together. We've got our bottom and one of our short sides. Made sure to put the rounded edge on the inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to come through and we're going to drill probably three holes is all we need. And we're going to estimate about halfway up that bottom piece. We want to drill these holes so the screw goes through this piece of wood real easy. And then we'll bite into that other piece of wood and suck it up tight. And then we're going to put some glue on our joint also to give us a little extra insurance. So let's get our holes drilled. Now we've got our holes drilled and got glue on the back side. We're putting our long sides on. Now we gotta line up our top corner up here. Got to add some more screws now. Line up this other side. So 
Here we go. Wipe our glue off of there. Got a little glue on the inside. We'll just wipe it real quick so it's not sticking out. Then we'll drill our other side and get it glued on. Now that we've got our outsides done, we put our insides together and then slipped it in. So now we just have to put some two screws on each side. And then we'll go out, we'll route these outside corners here, get those to match. And then we'll do a little hand sanding and this thing's ready to go. We're not going to put any kind of finish on it. Now we came in on the bottom on all of our dividers and we put a screw on the bottom in the middle of each of our dividers to help hold those in the box. Okay, our box is finished. We'll go out and uh, use the router around here. We won't bore you with that. Get some uh, little hand sanding done to get any rough areas taken care of. We'll kind of uh, round over these corners with our four and a half inch sander. And then we'll blow it off real good. We'll be done. Got her all done. What do you think? I like it. Jars fit in there real good. Just one last touch. There we go. Now we're done. Got the logo and everything. Well, that's going to work out nice being able to have something to carry all of our bottles in. And I'm sure the milk lady will uh, appreciate that as well. So... Hope you enjoyed our little project today, and uh, we'll see you next time on Mark Kelly Farms. Stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us.